host, Alan Tracy. I'm Rahana Power. And today we'll be talking about uh, kind of more St. Patrick's Day themed films and uh, Irish films, that is. Yeah. But uh, I guess first, like, what are some maybe memories we've had of like St. Patrick's Day before? Or, you know, the last year has happened. We all know what happened. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But in our distant memories. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) When we tell you some of these, you'll be like, why would you do that now? (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of what I think of whenever I think of, like, any fun things that I've ever done. (laughs) Like, oh, my God, we were around so many other people. (laughs) Yeah, I know. At once. (laughs) We're so close. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, I need much larger bubble. Please back away. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's how it's going to go when, you know, you cheers from a distance, you know, hand, arm's length away, you know. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they do in the movies, like, hold it up and away from your body. Yeah. Right. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are some of your, like, favorite St. Patty's Day memories, Alan? I remember... I worked for a radio station for a time and uh, with promotions, and we did events, and one of them was a parade for St. Patrick's Day in St. Paul. Um, Basically, we dressed up in whatever we had available in St. Patrick's Day-themed things, I guess. Some gear. Yeah, and then... uh, tossed out candy to the kids <laughs> nice naturally yes and you know you throw that on the road you know and you pick that up and you eat it later <laughs> oh of course i don't i mean i don't know about later i mean right now well, yeah whatever. but you know immediately <laughs> <laughs> but i think about that and i think about today like <laughs> you're eating something off of the ground <laughs> yeah i mean honestly the ground is probably the most like sanitary thing right now <laughs> out there Uh, i don't know about that (laughs) but yeah that's uh it's definitely a good point (laughs) while you're in a giant crowd of people yeah wearing a a big green top hat yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah so that and like drinking green beer um Mm -hmm. the first time i had it they didn't really offer you a choice of the type of beer that was green. Yeah. So it was just Miller Lite. And yep. I was just like, ugh, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Fun but, fact. Yeah. Um, in working at a bar uh, for St. Patty's Day a couple years in a row, um, that's because they actually get it shipped in that way. And so they only order one type of beer for it to be like that oh yeah so that's why they only have like the one or they like maybe some places will have like two or something but um Mm -hmm. yeah a lot of times at least in that my experience is it like the kegs came that way they came green so they had to order so many kegs of green beer um so like they might have gotten coors or miller light or something like that um in order to yeah i would prefer coors light to miller light Mm-hmm. I think Miller Lite's like my least favorite beer. I think that's understandable. <laughs> I'm a I'm a beer snob, so I'm not even gonna pretend. like I'm I'm just gonna keep to myself right now. But yeah, I I definitely understand that. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about you? What? Uh... Um. So I have a couple of fun St. Patty's memories, actually. Um. So. A while ago now, I had the privilege of visiting a friend of mine in Australia um, for a couple weeks, and it was over St. Patrick's Day. Um, She had a bunch of roommates who were from all over, um, France, England, uh, and Ireland, and then some other friends of theirs that were just around the city um, that were also from everywhere. But um, a couple of the, those friends were also from Ireland. So we hung out with them um, on St. Patty's Day, which was awesome. So, like, her one friend, like, painted our faces. Um, oh. And we did, like, these cool little, like, green, like, 
Irish designs. I don't know. It might have just mm-hmm. been us being silly. But um, I dressed up in all of our green. And then we walked through the city and went to this huge, um, like, outdoor concert, kind of. And it was, like, like genuine, like, legitimate Irish music and um, in concert. And it was... It's so, so fun. Um, and there were, like, these Irish dancers there walking around in the crowd. And it, it was really cool. Um, hmm. And then we, like, went to a few different pubs. That was the first time I had ever had Guinness was because she told us that we had to have Guinness. Um, and so I, I tried it then. Um, so it was, it was just really cool hanging out with um, some, like, um, actual full-blooded Irish folks, uh, friends, um, on St. Patty's Day and just seeing how different, uh, they might celebrate the day versus, you know, what we do here. Right. Which, funny enough, another (laughs) memory a few years ago, um, just your average, like, going to a bar with your friends, drinking and whatever, um, you know, wearing all the green, you know, got the suspenders and a bow tie and whatever. Why not? Of course. (laughs) Um, and we're there and drinking, just hanging out. And then all of a sudden there's like a DJ there and he starts playing Whitney Houston's I Want to Dance with Somebody. <laughs> and so I have video of us like singing that. And um, the least Irish song you could possibly play. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just funny seeing like the two, the two differences. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, those are probably my two favorite St. Patty's Days. Should post that on our stories at some point here. The the video? Yeah. <laughs> no, near, near, near. Where is this video? I will, uh-huh. <laughs> that is on my phone, and it is not leaving. <laughs> um, it yeah no. I, but well, at least share it with me. I, I mean. will. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I will. I I could probably find some pictures from Australia though and share those. So there you go. Um, that was a fun day. But yeah, so those were probably my favorites. Someday I would love, 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 love to go to Ireland, mm. um, just in general. But if I could go over St. Patrick's Day too, I think that would be amazing. Um, yeah, I so. wonder what that would be like, because I wonder what it really is like for them versus the Americanized version. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's different, I would assume. Oh, yeah, so. it's it's definitely different, for sure. <laughs> I would love to experience that though. Yeah. That'd be incredible. So that's um, interesting. The green beer just comes like that. Yeah. And then when they're out, they're out. Oh, I see. Yeah. Is it like so. a keg or is it a, what mm-hmm. is it? Yeah. Like it's just kegs. Oh. So you tap the keg and you get as much green beers in there and however many kegs you ordered. Um, usually a lot. Uh, but towards mm-hmm. the end of the night, it, it can very well um, be gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I remember going somewhere that was out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, I mean, we've we looked into it before the podcast, and, I mean, it's just it's like food coloring. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it tastes different. It's not, you know, there's nothing crazy about it. Um, but it's right. yeah, people get really excited about it. Yeah, so uh, we looked up how to color your beer green, <laughs> and Dude, it's base. Home. Yeah, basically, you have to get a light-colored beer. Hence, Miller Light and mm-hmm. all the lights, really. Um, all these it says either like a light-colored beer, such as a Pilsner or Pale Ale, and slowly pour your beer into the glass, and then add in three to five drops of green food coloring. And add more as desired mm-hmm. for your green color. Um, yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. I, I did forget to mention this. The my favorite thing about well, March really is like the Shamrock Shake. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I've actually never had one. Really. Yeah. Same with I'm trying to think of all of the weird things that McDonald's does. The <laughs> McRib. Yeah. Um, shamrock shake. Yeah, all of that. I've never, yeah, I've never had one before. Uh, I assume maybe. it's just mint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, try the shamrock shake once. This hopefully this year, huh? 
You only live once, Rahana. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. I do love mint ice cream, so I will probably... Oh, having yeah, received me too. that confirmation, I think I'm okay with, with uh, experimenting and trying that. The problem <laughs> is my new phone is like minty green, so every time I look at it, it's like, oh, I could go for a shamrock shake right now. <laughs> Alan's just at the grocery store buying all the mint ice cream, <laughs> so you can just make them at home. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Nothing I'd, wrong with that, man. I need a blender for that, I guess. But, uh, you don't have a blender? No. I, have I go two to blenders. McDonald's. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> to get my shamrock shake. So. Well, there is that. Yeah. Got to support small business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor McDonald's always suffering. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. So, with it being. Um, you know, St. Patty's Day coming up, and um, we've actually received a request from one of our amazing listeners before um, to really look into some films that were, um, you know, made in Ireland or maybe made about Ireland, um, maybe by Irish filmmakers, like all of these things. So we, it, when I, I will admit, Alan, when we first got this request, I, in my head, I was like, I don't think I've ever seen an Irish movie. Like, I'm right. certain that I haven't. And then I felt really sad because I love Ireland and I love the, the um, um, just, like, music and, and I'm obsessed with the accent. Um, and, like, <laughs> I, I would love to go there. Like, it looks absolutely beautiful. I've heard amazing things about, about um, the country. And so I, I felt kind of ashamed inside. And then as I was looking into it, it's like, okay, well, that's not true. I've actually seen some. Um, I just didn't realize that so many movies either fully took place in Ireland, were actually shot in Ireland, or had at least some scenes that were shot there. Um, you know, the Cliffs of Moher, obviously, it, it comes into place in, in a few different um, films, like uh, Princess Bride. I think that that's a big Minnesota movie. Um, as someone who is not from Minnesota, I had never heard about it until I moved here. So everybody here seems obsessed with it. But uh, <laughs> That's true. yeah, Cliffs of Moher is um, was used as a location for uh, one of the um, locations in that movie. Um, so really? there's a lot of yeah, which I think is fascinating, um, especially for like that movie. You just don't think like when you're watching it. I don't think that you're really thinking about the locations of where they shot this. Um, Right. For some, like you're just so involved in like what's going on and the fantasy of it all. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's really cool, um, like finding that out. And there's so many movies like that. So there's a few that um, you know were shot like mostly in Ireland or um, or maybe really take place. Uh, like Ireland is a big plot point. Um, and so, like, My Left Foot is one um, that I think is, is fairly well known. Um, I had actually, I just saw it. I just finished watching it literally hours ago. Um, admittedly, uh, I had heard of it so many times. And uh, honestly, the, the title, I will be totally honest, the title was like, I'm, I'm good. Like, like, no. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and looking into these films and doing this research and finding this and really actually reading about it, I was like, this sounds fascinating. It's so, so good. Um, Daniel Day Lewis, Brenda Fricker. Um, it's about Christy Brown, who had cerebral palsy. Um, he was a writer and a painter. And it's his, I mean, it's his life story. And it's, absolutely wonderful very well done um i found myself it was filmed um you know in solely in in ireland uh and i found myself at the end of the movie like try like every uh, i do this and maybe it's annoying to some people and maybe other people do it too so they understand i don't whatever judge me i don't care um but when I'm done watching movies where there's other accents, I find myself like gradually leaning into those accents. <laughs> um, and so I was doing that pretty hard with this, <laughs> this movie. Um, I just loved it. It was so, so good. Um, so that's, that's one. I'm guessing it's because of Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, probably. 
Yeah. He just he does that to you, you know? Like you he just does. you become so invested in him and his everything that he does. It's he's phenomenal. Yeah. I'm, um I'm reminded of uh Gangs of New York mm, that he did. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same thing. <laughs> it it is. Which is funny because in there in that movie he's not Irish, but instead he's I assume actually like born in New York, grew up in New York, um, and it's about like the Irish immigrants coming into New York and it's so he's sort of like on the other side of of that that threshold there in that movie. Um Yeah. But also his performance is amazing. Yeah. They always dress him up in that way, I feel like, sometimes. Whenever mm-hmm. I see him in films, at least, it's just like... He's always got the mustache and <laughs> mm-hmm. that look. He pulls it off well. Yeah, yeah. And you see him in real life, it's like, that's not him. <laughs> right. Is he do? Did he um, stop acting? Or is he, like, actually still yeah, doing I think anything? Yeah, I think he... I, it's not like officially over, but I mean, never say never is kind of the theme of things. But um, at last I heard, he stopped acting in at least films um, after Phantom Threat. I think. Yeah. Yep. So. I think that was. I mean, I suppose he's sixty-three. He probably just wants to relax. Yeah, or just do theater. I mean. Yeah. Something. I mean, he's probably quite rich now but and can enjoy oh, his life obviously yeah. whatever he wants to right. do so that's a good point yeah I, I think phantom thread he looked more like himself than i've ever seen him but i have actually not seen that movie yet yeah it's yeah pretty good i do want to though mm-hmm. um another uh film where it does take place partially in ireland but then also partially in the u.s that i know you've seen is brooklyn oh <laughs> with saoirse ronan saoirse rhymes with inertia anytime yeah anytime i ever need to know how to pronounce her name because i forget every single time i'm just gonna call you out <laughs> and be like hey remind me yeah cirrhosis of the liver <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Seriously, every time I try and, like, sound out her name, and I'm like, I know this is wrong. <laughs> I know I'm doing this wrong. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's, it, remind me, isn't that where she, um, like, is from Ireland, moves to the U.S., um, mm-hmm. it sort of falls in love or something, and it goes back? Yeah, sure. Or something? <laughs> yeah, sure. You're the one that saw it. Oh, God. It was so long ago. Um, it, I mean, it, it is six years old now. Yeah. Which seems weird. I feel like it just came out. Yeah, I feel like I have this um, gaping black hole memory from last year. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, like, that's true. Like, sucked everything that came count, near so it. Like, it's really five years this old. wasn't important, <laughs> it's now in the black hole. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I think that that's what it is, though. So she like lives in Ireland, mm-hmm. moves to Brooklyn on her own, leaving her mom and sister, and then um, her si- and she like falls in love, gets married, like works at a bookshop or something, and then her sister dies, uh-huh. and so she flies back to Ireland. And at that point, I don't know if she falls in love with another guy there or what. That's what I gathered from the trailer. Uh. Is that she does, but maybe not. <laughs> um, but she's, like, torn between her two lives, basically. Between, like, her home mm-hmm. and then her, like, new adventure in America or something. Um, so it, it only partially takes place in Ireland, but it's such a huge plot point. Like, it's right. it's incredible. Um, yeah. Uh, 1950s Brooklyn. So very, um, I don't know, just modern times, if you will. Modern. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you would call that era per se, but um, old. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. we're coming up on the new fifties <laughs> soon, so. <laughs> Lord. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't remember much else about the film. Sadly. Mm-hmm. Um. That's okay. It was really well shot, though. I remember that much. Just loving the. Mm-hmm cinematography 
um, yeah. in the style of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do really want to see it. Um, mostly, honestly, for the, the Ireland aspect of it mm -hmm. um, more than anything else. Um, I know that she's probably one of the most... Well, we'll get into that. We'll get into actors and actresses later, but yeah. um, I, I think she's probably one of the top uh, um, well-known actresses from Ireland, at least. So I think that's another draw to that film, probably. Right. Um, another one that I had actually forgotten about until looking into this, which is so weird because I just fell in love with this movie when it first came out in 2007. Um and most of all, fell in love with the music. Uh, it is a musical, so that makes sense. Um, is Once. So, hmm. it is this Irish busker. And he meets this lovely lady. And they write songs and rehearse songs and record them throughout this film. It takes place over not, not too long of a period of time if i remember correctly it's been a while since i've seen it um but it it was really just supposed to be like this small project that the um i think the director was going to be doing in between larger projects and then this blew up became a huge thing won oscars and um best song and and all of that it it was it's really lovely lovely film um and the music is fantastic uh glenn hansard and i'm gonna say her name wrong and i apologize marketa erglova sounds nice um sounds but uh close. they're <laughs> they their voices are wonderful and they sing so well together and it's it's a fantastic movie um fantastic mm. film for anyone who has not seen it and uh wonderful wonderful soundtrack so Look that up, people. Um, it will be worth your time. Okay. Um, and then another one that I... This one actually threw me off guard, Alan. I had no idea this was shot in Ireland. When I found it, I thought that my list was wrong. So I like went and did a bunch of extra checking. I was like double-checking my double-checks. Because I was like, there's no... This isn't... No, it's not... Made in Ireland. <laughs> I was like, these lists are wrong. Um, but it, it, it is. It is. It's, it was shot in Ireland. Uh, is The Lobster. Oh. With, with Colin Farrell. Yeah. Colly F. <laughs> <laughs> you have some of the funniest nicknames for people. <laughs> I just, I love it. I'm sure that they would want to just punch me in the face if they heard <laughs> me say these things. But it doesn't, I don't even care. I love it so much. <laughs> Um, so it was shot in Ireland, huh? Yes, multiple locations across Ireland. Um, it's a weird movie. Like it's, it's fascinating, but it's very weird. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, shot all across Ireland, which is so cool. I had no idea. Yeah. Huh. Me and neither. You know, shooting star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um definitely a strange film i watching it the second time with more of a comedy lens it makes more sense mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> just because it's a dark comedy in that sense of like what is going on here <laughs> and it's really right. about dating it's really about like what do you do when you're dating <laughs> yeah it's like this weird dystopian future or something yeah. where like you have to have a partner like, you can't just be in the world without a partner. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, no. Like, you, you don't need to exist if you don't have a partner. Which, first of all, what? <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, Colin Farrell, Collie F, goes to this hotel and yeah. lives there for... He has 45 days. Everybody that goes there has to, like, sign a thing. And I think they pick, like, an animal of some sort. Yeah. And for whatever reason, dude picks a lobster. No clue. Whatever. Be weird. That's fine. Um, so he picks a lobster, and he has 45 days to mingle with all the other lonely, sad people in this hotel. Yeah. And find a romantic partner, and... Or be it, turned into a lobster. 
literally be turned into a lobster. What the hell? And then, but the the tricky thing is, if I'm remembering correctly, Alan, correct me if I'm wrong. Hmm. Isn't it that like he's paired up with this one chick who's awful or crazy or something, and then he starts falling in love with Rachel Weiss? Mm-hmm. But even though he's like connected to her and wants her to be his partner because he's paired up with this other chick he can't and so he like it's really weird yeah as far as i remember rachel vice's character is um uh, like part of the eh, not nomad group but they're like a fringe group that doesn't want to conform to the ways of like being coupled up oh that's right that's right that's right and but they pose as a couple in like the city where couples go. So, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, that's very interesting because it's like uh, you can't be a part of civilization unless either you're an animal or coupled up, basically. Yeah, and, and then, even though they're coupled up, yeah, they don't want to be coupled up in civilization, and so they're pretending to be coupled up, even though they, it's very well, weird. Yeah, they're after something. I forget what they were going for. There. I don't remember. But yeah. yeah, it's strange. But uh It is. But it's quite good when you look at it like that with that lens, if you watch it again mm-hmm. under that understanding that it's really about like how society views our relationships and dating and such. Yeah. It's really quite uh <laughs> turn a phrase for the end of the film, eye opening. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's a fascinating one. Um I've only seen it once. Maybe I think you're right. It might take a second viewing. Yeah. Like with with more like the an first open time mind. is quite shocking. It is. It really is. Um, Your ghost so lamp the most. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you were gonna have to be turned into this is random <laughs> uh, an animal. This is not um, random. <laughs> If you, yeah, if you, if that movie was real, like if that was real life and you were in a hotel and you had to choose, like, I'm going to become this animal if I don't find a lady friend Mm -hmm. to be with forever, what would you choose to be? Oh boy. That one's tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know my favorite animals, but, um, I don't know if I'd want to be them. (laughs) Interesting. What are your favorite animals? Well, I like turtles, you know. Turtle. Yeah. They they have their homes with them. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, but um, I guess, yeah, I like cats too. Cats mm-hmm. and dogs. That makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. The things that happen to animals these days is just kind of depressing so i mean yeah yeah people are the worst yeah (laughs) um to be quite frank so yes i agree uh we don't deserve animals they are better than us (laughs) um yes how about you Um, what what would you be i think i would be either like uh i guess why don't you go first elephant hands down really really yeah, it's my favorite animal. I'm obsessed with them. They're amazing. They're wonderful creatures. They're beautiful. They're smart. They think humans are adorable, which hmm. I th- makes me just want to cry. Hmm. Like, that's amazing. We do not deserve elephants. Hmm. Um, it's, I mean, they do, they are treated just awful by humanity, um, yeah. which breaks my heart. But I just, I just love those creatures. Well, so I if guess, I, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, that was, that was it. Like, if I can't be, if I if I have to be something other than a human, um, for whatever reason, uh, then I want to be an elephant. Okay. Yeah. I I think I did remember one animal I do like is a panda. So maybe I'd be a panda. Cute. <laughs> oh my gosh! I love that answer. That's adorable. It also makes me think of. Um, this is also random. We are tangenting say it. so hard right now. I think I know, uh, but say it. <laughs> I know you. I know that you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> that just totally makes me think of Tropic Thunder. Yes, I knew it. 
I knew it. <laughs> it totally does. We just watched that the other day, and it's just a brilliant fucking movie. Like, it's so, so good. He loves pandas. He saves he loves the pandas. Them. <laughs> he loves them. And I totally and then, didn't see that coming. Me either. It's so... God, that movie's amazing. Um, that is oh That God. will be one of my all-time favorite comedies for the rest of my life, I think, because it's just... It's so fantastic. I, yeah, I love Ben Stiller in that. I mean, yes. <laughs> like he thinks it's a movie, so cut, cut. The <laughs> <laughs> scene's oh, over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, it's so good. Anyways, anyway, yes. Um, a panda would be my choice. We just went from Irish films to Tropic Thunder <laughs> so fast. Uh, <laughs> that's. I think that's a good choice. I love it. Yeah. Excellent, excellent choice. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm getting back to Ireland a little bit. Um, <laughs> there, there are, um, like we had mentioned, uh, a bunch of movies that have, you know, were either shot fully in Ireland or partially in Ireland that I did not know. Some of these make sense. Um, you know, I haven't seen these movies since they were, like, new. Or since I was y- much younger than I am today. Um, hmm. And so I just don't think about it. But, like, Braveheart, obviously. Of course it was shot all over Ireland. You know? Mm-hmm. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Um, Tristan and Isolt. Uh, which takes place partially in Ireland, I think. Um was shot partially in Ireland for some scenes. Um, others were shot in uh, the Czech Republic and Br- Belgium? No. Uh, England? I don't know. Other places. Yeah. But uh, partially there, um, which makes sense to me. Having said that, um, like Saving Private Ryan, the shots from Omaha Beach are at a beach that i cannot pronounce (laughs) in (laughs) ireland um so that's really cool and like reign of fire uh was shot in multiple locations across ireland Hmm. which i don't know i don't know if you remember that movie or ever saw it but yeah yeah the one with the dragon it does have a dragon and matthew mcconaughey yeah and the crazy guy uh um christian bale yeah, if dragons existed, I would be a dragon. But, um, you know. That would be a dope answer. What if that's how dragons come back? <laughs> it's because we have to choose to be an animal if we're gonna, if we're not going to be with people. And then someone's like, I want to be a dragon. And we're like, okay, I guess dragons exist now. <laughs> Careful with that, because it could turn you into a Komodo dragon and you'd just be crawling around. So. Uh, that's true. <laughs> That'd be very unfortunate. Yeah, once I saw that, I was like, this is a dragon? <laughs> right. This is this nothing is a, like I thought it would be. It's very underwhelming. <laughs> Must be a baby. <laughs> Alan's standing there just like Dracarys and it's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, the, the Minnesota <laughs> Zoo before any of that, but yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I know what you mean. Uh yeah, like seeing the shark from like Jaws and then going to the tank and seeing <laughs> it's yeah. just a like, lazy yeah. fish it's just kind of exactly. flying around <laughs> exactly much oh, less intimidating it's not a great white that's why that's <laughs> <laughs> um i know we you had also mentioned uh before we we were talking about this but like the star wars movie the final three star wars movies i think it was it was just briefly in the first and third one but a lot of the second one um yeah. Uh, had um, an island in from like off of Ireland as well. Yeah, um, the or was rocks, shot in Ireland. The rocks mm-hmm. where you see Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing. That like things like that, scenes like that make me want to go there even more than I already did. Yeah, like it's so beautiful, astonishing. I forget the name. Is it Skagen? Don't remember. I don't know, but I feel like you just called me something really awful. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm just 
just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head what the yeah that the location, location is called. Yeah, but it's astonishing. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, my uh, mother went there and she brought me back a T-shirt with like it had the um, what's his name Kylo Ren on it. So mm-hmm. as to symbolize that. Star Wars era, I suppose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. So. Kylo Ren slash Ben. Right. Yes. Skellig. That's what. Skellig. Skellig. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely on the list for someday, for sure. Yeah. Um. I know there's a couple others like uh, Snow White and the Huntsman. Mm-hmm. Um shot at the cliffs of more for a few scenes um Hmm. uh frank um which is a movie with uh michael fassbender i think um where he has like this weird i don't even i'm not even going to pretend to know how to explain that movie i haven't seen it yet i want to it looks weird that's all that i can say but a lot of the a lot of it was filmed in uh bray dublin and wick uh wicklow um but yeah, it's that that movie. I mean, it's supposed to be fantastic, so um, we'll see. But yeah, so lots of movies that you like we've heard of or have seen, we just didn't realize. Yeah. You know, we're shot partially there, which I think is fantastic. Um, it's it's so interesting, like digging into that and seeing what we found. Right. Um, and then we have just. You know, All the, the actors and actresses that Ireland has given us. Um, who are some of your, your favorites? Well, Colin Farrell comes to mind. Mm-hmm. You've, you've heard of him. No, I'm just kidding. Collie I mean, F. I haven't heard of Colin Farrell, but I've heard of Collie F. So. Collie F, yeah. Yeah. That guy. He's up and coming. Um, he would hate my guts if he ever met me. <laughs> Be like, how dare you call me that? Yeah. <laughs> Good so thing sorry, it's only sir. on a public podcast. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that he will definitely hear someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, phone booth was good. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. It was all him. I mean totally forgot about that movie. <laughs> I remember like when it first came out, just thinking like this seems interesting because I want to see how it plays out just for mm-hmm. that reason, but it does seem boring, but mm-hmm. can you make it interesting? And I remember that was kind of the big, yeah, kind of a big deal then. Yeah. I don't remember pretty much anything about it. Well, it's a him in the phone booth pretty much, so. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean, that came out. Lord, when did that come out? 2002. That's almost 20 years old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so is, now you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I went and saw that in the theaters in 2002. Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, he was in Widows. He was in, uh, oh, I saw The Gentleman recently. Mm, mm-hmm. I want to see that. Yeah. That looks really good. I, I haven't seen Ava yet. I, I want to see that. He's in there yep. apparently. Mm-hmm. Of course, the lobster, as we mentioned. Naturally. Uh, oh, wow, he's going to be in The Batman. The Batman, you say? Um, that's the, the one with... Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I guess he's... Sorry, that was filled with judgment. I apologize. <laughs> I take that back. No, I get it. I mean, he's going to... Well... I don't know. I'm sure that it's going to be good. I'm <laughs> I'm interested. Look, I'm I'm intrigued. It's a different I, penguin, I'm sure. He's slimmed yes. down for this role. So Yeah, it's not Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. We'll just see. It's fine. Um I'm sure he'll do a great job. Yeah. And I'm also sure that people will just crap on him all over the place for it. They're going to crap on the whole movie and I'm not going to be one of those judgy people taking back the judgment. Mhm. And I'm just pushing it away. Okay, continue. (laughs) 
Yeah, because I, I would see just about most of the films he's been in, like uh, even The New World. That was hard to find. Uh, it's not really yeah. a audience pleaser, if you will, or popcorn flake. So it's more. Oh, art. really? It's like The Lobster in terms of art house. So. Mm, yeah. Yep. But he also does things like True Detective, you know, all those types of things. Oh, yes. That was, it was so good. God, I love that show. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I actually liked the season that he was in. Like, I, I liked it more once I kind of realized, okay, these are all different. You have to, you know, yeah. detach from the last one. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, how about you? What are some of your favorite films of his? Of his? Oh, man. Um, that's such a good question. I really liked... Oh, God. I have to go back and look. Hold on. Um, I liked Seven Psychopaths. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really good. Um, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parna- Parnassus. Uh, he is one of the people, one of the three who... Um, helped complete Heath Ledger's role after he passed away. Oh. So him, Jude Law, and um, Johnny Depp, uh, like when they go into that other world or the Imaginarium or whatever, um, it's his character, but he's he looks different. And so each time he looks like a different person and one of those times is um, Colin Trail. Hmm. So I liked that. Um 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 oh my god there's so many movies oh yeah did you see the recruit Mm. or minority report my i mean yeah minority report that's also that's also from a long time ago yeah classics it is but i mean he hit it up in like the early 2000s he had tons of blockbusters at that time yeah that's true that was really his uh Although time. one I was really disappointed in was Alexander. I was just like, hmm. Yeah, I didn't see that one either. But it um, has, like, all the top stars in it, and I was just like, why did this go so wrong, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It had um, everything going for it. <laughs> it Yeah. It did. I did, like, um, Horrible Bosses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was really funny in that. He's so gross. <laughs> Right. And so awful, but it was he did a really good job there. He had the balding wig or something. Yes. Oh, <laughs> just Ugh. gross. But yeah, he he did really well there. Um, and then I really want to see because I know he's in it. Um, I mean it's not why I want to see, but the Fantastic Beast movies. Um, I still haven't seen them yet, uh, mm, but I want mm-hmm, to. And mm-hmm. he's in I think at least one of them. Um. And so I'm I'm certain that I will like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it, <laughs> even <laughs> though I haven't even seen it yet. So, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I like him. He's he's excellent. Um, I know there's a couple of actors from Game of Thrones that are are Irish that are great. Um, Aidan Gillen, uh, who plays Littlefinger on Game of Thrones? Mm. It was just the creepy. Like we're we're actually rewatching Game of Thrones right now. Um, <laughs> you know, just for fun, just fun uh, to do. Uh, <laughs> but right. um, remember the good char- times. Exactly, his character is just awful. He's just <laughs> gross. Now that you think about, yeah, because he Ugh. had he had me. You know, I wasn't sure about him all the time. Yeah, like you don't know if out. he's actually going to be gross or if he's just like seems like he's gross right it's like well okay yeah he does some good things you know it's like yeah just enough so he's not you know the bad bad guy i guess yeah so. just so he can be sneaky and slithery yeah Ugh. but he in fact is gross so unfortunately <laughs> yeah it makes me like it's hard for me to um to pull away from that in watching him in other roles Oh. So I, I, I do have judgment when I watch his other roles. <laughs> but I do think he's a good actor. I think he's a really good actor. Yeah. Um and 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 I mean his yeah. Um so there's that. Aiden Gillen. Um well, Leon Cumming. Oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. I was gonna say he was like in Bohemian Rhapsody. 
and he yeah. played like that slimy agent guy or whatever mm-hmm. so there is that yeah. he just does that kind of role really well yes <laughs> he also died in the i think like the opening scene of um uh the dark knight rises oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. something about him in a helicopter and bane was there and it was a whole thing i'm pretty sure he dies spoiler alert um <laughs> if you haven't been to our podcast lately <laughs> right yeah i i am all about the spoils um i also love liam cunningham mm-hmm. um even just re-watching the series again now he um really stands out to me i really really like him as an actor um and i've seen some interviews and stuff that he's done and just like as a human being he just seems fantastic um Yeah, he, fun fact, he um, was just working like a normal, regular day job in Ireland, saw a flyer for like an acting school and decided like, eh, I'll give it a shot, went and then got like this little role in this one film and he was like, okay, this is dope. And then he just started acting and stopped everything else. Hmm. Because he just, just saw a flyer and he was like, yeah, sure, we're done. And now we have Liam Cunningham. Yeah. Cunningham. That's um, not depressing to every actor that's ever put their whole life into it, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 100%. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sure it wasn't. You it's, know, I mean, it is. He obviously got into it, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, like, it's not like it, it happens after a year. But, yeah. Um, not necessarily overnight, but. Yeah. Right. Um, but, yeah, I do love him. I've always loved him. He was in um, A Little Princess which you probably don't remember. I don't think most people do. It's fine. It's old. It's from 1995. And I loved that movie when it came out. Hmm. Um, like, as a child, I just loved it. And he uh, he was in it, and he was just absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, he was in... Uh, was The Whistleblower? That's really good, with uh, Rachel Weisz. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to look for him, see? So You should. Yeah. Because he is fantastic. Everything that he does. He's just great. Um The Mummy, not the original one. <laughs> um with uh with what's his face, but um Brendan Fraser, but another one. Uh Clash of the Titans, he was in that. Safe House. Yeah. Um yeah, he's he's fantastic. Um, and again, I feel like he was in Hunger. He was in Hunger, which was also made in Ireland. Fun fact. Um, that's a, that's actually another movie that I really want to see um, it's from two thousand eight. So I'm a little behind. Um, right. But it's got him and Michael Fassbender. And it's Steve McQueen. So huh. and Steve McQueen. Yeah. And it looks excellent. So it's um, Michael Fassbender uh, gets, um, like, all of these inmates at a Northern Ireland prison to go on a hunger fast with him. And I think Leon Cunningham, uh, he's, like, a priest or something. Um, And he's, I think he's trying to convince them not to do it. I, I don't really know all the details, but um, yeah, it it looks really interesting. Um, so yeah, I love him. Um, and then just a small plug for Nicola Colin. Colin, can't pronounce her last name. Doesn't matter. She was in Bridgerton, and she's in Dairy Girls, and she is just lovely and adorable, and she's a wonderful actress. So just a plug for her. Because she needs she needs my plug. Yeah, it's, it's very important to I've her never career. Heard of her. Yeah, that's because you still have to watch Bridgerton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've heard that kind of yeah so many times. I know exactly what that means. 
<laughs> what does it mean, Rohan? It means it's never happening. Well, I wouldn't say it's never happening. I mean, SNL kind of stoked my interest a little bit, but then I was like, huh. Eh. I'll get to it when there's more, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure you'll watch that right around when I watch Mighty Ducks, so we're fine. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> fine. Um, Be that way. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Kenneth Brana. Brana. Mm. I, I don't know how to pronounce anyone's name, you guys. I think Brana sounds right, yeah. Okay. We'll just... um, he's excellent. So he, dude is freaking brilliant, first of all. Um, he's in, he's the bad guy in Tenet, which I think is like just the latest film that he's, he's been in that has come out. Yeah. Um, he was in, uh, Murder on the Orient Express and there's a sequel coming out, uh, hopefully this year, unless it gets pushed back, um, called Death on the Nile, which I'm so excited about because those, that movie was fucking amazing. He's excellent in it. Um, so, so good. He was in Thor. He was in Wild Wild West. And I don't care who's laughing at that uh, reference because I literally just watched that this week and it's still a great movie. Um, (laughs) And yes, I am talking about the Will Smith, Kevin Klein film. (laughs) (laughs) Not the original. Um, But yeah, he's in that. He's so good. He's so talented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely saw him in Tenant. I don't remember him in uh, Murder on the Orient Express. So I'd have to watch it back because there's just so many stars in that one too. Yeah, he's the main guy. He's the um, the detective. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then there's Dunkirk, of course. Like naturally. Yep. Yeah, he he must be on Nolan's good side. So that's you know. Yeah. Pretty no kidding. Good. <laughs> Not a bad spot to be. Um, he was also in Harry Potter. I'm just going to throw that out there. Oh, who was he in that? He played Gilderoy Lockhart. I think he was only in one of them. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I... Yeah, I was like, what happened to that guy? <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, to Chris O'Dowd. Yes. Love Chris O'Dowd. Uh, I love him from the IT crowd. I know he's been in, like, Bridesmaids and a bunch of other films. Yeah, he's been in a lot. Um, but, I mean, he's he's very versatile. Um, mm-hmm. There's one film, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, which is not the best for <laughs> a podcast. <laughs> what the hell is it? It was a serious movie. Um, I just saw it. This is this is really upsetting that I can't think of it. Hmm. Uh, Let's see here. Friends with kids. He's really really good in that. Very good. Um, it's a smaller movie, but it's I mean it's got like big names. At least I think they're big names. It's got Kristen Wiig, Maya Rudolph, hmm. Megan Fox, Adam Scott. John Hamm. Um, oh, it's a great in, movie. This is 40. I'll have to watch that yep. back, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. St. Vincent, which mm-hmm. was a, a really good film. Um, Mary Poppins, the new Mary Poppins. <laughs> is that only on Disney Plus, too? <laughs> um, I mean, it might be now. It, uh, Yeah. I, I mean, it came out like three years ago, so probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's got him, Emily Blunt, and Lynn Manuel Miranda. What more do you need? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. I yeah, oh. I love him as uh, Roy and IT Crowd. I highly recommend it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your jam. Yeah, uh, Gabriel Byrne from like The Usual Suspects. Mm-hmm. And I just saw him in a series called Zero Zero Zero. On Amazon, it's zero, quite zero, good. Zero. Yeah. Interesting. Is it new? Yeah. Well, maybe a few years, but yeah, it's fairly new. Okay. Interesting. On Amazon, I'll have to go to give it a watch. Yeah, it has Andrea Risenbrough. I think that's her name, Bro. Bro. She 
she's been in a lot of stuff too but uh yeah mm-hmm. but gabriel Byrne, staying sticking on the irish thing <laughs> yeah sticking to that um he's been in so much i mean he's been working since yeah. the 70s so yeah he uh he's fantastic at what he does um and then we have Killian Murphy, mm-hmm. um, who was also in one of the Batman movies. Yeah. Batman tie. Um, uh, Peaky three. Blinders is a big one for him lately. Yeah. Yep. Um, what is happening with my computer? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to Uh-oh. trying to pull up this guy, and it's uh, not working. Well, he was in 28 Days Later, Inception, um, mm-hmm. The Dark, yeah, Dark Knight, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Wind That Shakes the Barley, which was a, another big film made in Ireland as well. Um, oh. Won uh, quite a few awards and stuff. Uh, I think he won a few specifically for his role in that yeah. back in, like, 2006, I think. Huh. Yeah, I like him as an actor. He's... Oh, yeah, he was going to be in A Quiet Place Part 2, dot, 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 <laughs> whenever that comes out. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I remember seeing him in the trailer, at least. Did that come out already? What's going on with no. this film? No, it didn't. Huh. It says it was released March 8th of last... Well, that was probably the original release date. Yeah. Right now I'm seeing September 17th of this year. Oh. <laughs> well, that doesn't um, count. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's really cool. I didn't know he was supposed to be in that. Yeah. That'll uh, be awesome. Dunkirk Anthropoid. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. I remember him in, um, what was it? Red Eye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a funny film. I didn't see it. It uh, he, j- him in the trailer freaked me out, and so I didn't see it. <laughs> I'm being totally honest. Yeah, yeah, there's um, that. But I mean, it wasn't as, I don't know, it was kind of ridiculously scary, if you will. It wasn't really to me, at least. I, I'm mm-hmm. sure it's scary to some people, but um, <laughs> <laughs> to some people, I, I don't know. Thanks. But I just thought it was funny. Just watching it, just how ridiculous some of the scenes were. Is yeah, like, what is go- like? There's only so much you can do on a plane. Let's let's. I mean, you I mean, can snakes, have snakes on, a, on a plane. Yeah, that, you that's can, really like, as high as it gets. I think you can do all sorts of things on a plane. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I, I thought it was funny. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, Sir Ronan. Go yes. back to back to her. You said um, it. I know. It took me a second. I had to think about it before I said it. I don't know if you noticed the pause. Oh, what well, we happened. were talking about Killian Murphy. Yes, <laughs> I was practicing in my head. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. But uh, yeah, she she is badass. Um, I really like so much of what she's done. Um. Little Women, yeah. Oh my Just god, her and Little Women. I love that movie so much. Um, yeah, it's so, so good. Uh, she was in Hannah, like, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, That's where I great. first saw her. Mm-hmm. It was so good. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see Mary Queen of Scots. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard good things. Um... I mean, she, God, she's even things that I haven't seen, like Lady Bird. I yeah. haven't seen it, but, you know, obviously heard great, great things. Um, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh. Wow. Mm-hmm. The Way Back. The Lovely Bones. Like, oh, she's not doing bones. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's a dark talented. film. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she, she's kind of run the spectrum here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's one of those actors that can do so much, and it's just beginning for her. Yeah. And she has done so much, so it's just it's kind of astounding. She really has, yeah. And, and then, um, 007, yeah. maybe, huh? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, again, I'm still mind-boggled by the fact that he's Irish. Yeah. I didn't... So, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. I <laughs> genuinely thought that he was English. I thought so, um, too. Yeah. Which, I mean, for, probably just says something about his accent. Like, he does such a good accent. Looks like he moved know? to the UK. Okay, so. well, that's cheating. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> that's yeah. That's cheating. <laughs> that's, that's cheating. At um, an early age. <laughs> mm-hmm. Still really cool, though. Yeah. Like, you're from California, but... Yeah, exactly. Minnesota, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah. What I want to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then um, Liam Neeson. Oh yeah. Which is a big one. Um, I kind of forget that he's from. Like he does such a good American accent. Uh, I forget that he's <laughs> he's Irish, but yeah, he is from Northern Ireland. And uh, yeah, another he's guy. also been acting since the 70s, which I didn't realize. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's done a lot, um, obviously, everyone knows. But yeah, that's that's another, another great one. Star Wars, Les Mis, Gangs of New York, Love Actually, which is the best ever hmm. um god he's done he's just done everything ted too <laughs> sure ted too uh and 17 <laughs> taken movies yeah um the first taken was the real one but yeah, yeah. like he yeah he's um he's wonderful men in black international i don't care what anybody says that movie is wonderful um yeah so he's he he's fantastic um also a, probably one of the most widely known irish actors uh today at least um but yeah so if you have movies that you can think of that maybe we didn't list here um some of your favorite irish films uh films with your favorite irish actors made by your favorite irish filmmakers um, share them with us. If you have, um, I, I want everyone to share. I'm in a sharing mood here today, guys. Um, if you have, um, you know, St. Patty's Day plans that maybe don't require being in a giant huddle with a bunch of people, uh, share that with us. Tag yeah. us. Hashtag us. If you have, you know, ideas of what people, like other people can do, if you have rituals and things that you like, uh, not rituals. Um, the thing that you do every year. Uh, <laughs> traditions. There we go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, share it with us. We want to hear what you're doing for St. Patrick's Day. We want to hear about some of your favorite Irish films. Um, so definitely share with us. Tag us. Hashtag us. All of those things. Mm-hmm. And until next time, thanks for listening. And we'll catch you later. Bye.